Hello and welcome to this restoration of a Matchbox 3C Mercedes-Benz Bins Ambulance. I'm Jason and this is Diecast Restos. The model was produced by Lesney from 1967 and converted to their new Superfast range in 1970. The Superfast model remained until 1972 when it was replaced by the Monteverdi High prototype. My example is in pretty poor condition, featuring patchy paintwork, dull chrome work, a partially missing beacon and split metal work at the base of the rear hatch. The casting is based on the W110 2nd series Mercedes-Benz and converted to an ambulance by German coach builder Binz. Binz specialised in converting mostly Mercedes platform vehicles to emergency service vehicles and here is a W110 conversion on which the model is similarly based. The castings were painted cream or off-white, featuring blue tinted windows that incorporated a blue rooftop beacon. Inside is an off-white plastic interior and you could, when new, find a patient on a stretcher inside that could be removed via the opening rear hatch for added play value. As you can see here, the bottom of the rear brace is split on one side and cracks slightly on the other. Attached to the interior is a suspension spring that's looking a bit bent out of shape. The hatch fits into the gap quite snugly. Models were fitted with black plastic wheels in regular wheels variation. As the base was silver plated and incorporated the grille, headlights, bumpers and Mercedes emblem, silver trim was not applied to this model. Red cross decals or labels were applied to the doors and these were shared with the concurrent 54B SNS Cadillac Ambulance. The Caddy also made the switch to Superfast, where the bins received wheel arch modifications to allow the wider 4mm Superfast wheels to fit. It previously had the narrow 2mm width wheels attached. The three-pointed star was removed when switched over to Superfast, though that was already missing on this regular wheels example. Sure enough, the rear brace soon detached, meaning full surgery is now required rather than some reinforcement. Anyway, I persist as normal, removing the large window piece using my shallow 5mm drill bit. The model was revived in 1977 as both an off-white ambulance and an olive green military ambulance. Now the two rear rivets were replaced with an L-shaped tongue while the headlights were removed from the base casting. The body had the rear hatch cast shut with new headlights cast in, replacing the base fitments. These examples did not include the figurine on a stretcher. So here are all of the components of my example. I give the axles a quick buff up using my battery drill. Then I place the body with the rear hatch attached, along with the broken rear brace, into a bowl and fill with hot water, ready for the caustic soda. Bins were founded in 1936 in the small Baden-Württemberg town of Lourge. The company mostly manufactured and modified production vehicles as taxis, trucks, convertibles and ambulances. During the war years, Bins produced truck cabs and armoured personnel carriers. After World War II, Bins continued to manufacture truck cabs, mostly for Daimler Benz, among others, and even produced scooters between 1954 and 1958. Modified body Mercedes W186 models were produced and later W120 models featured as ambulances. In the 1960s, the W110 was offered as an ambulance with an extended wheelbase, which provides the basis for this casting. Here you'll see I'm gluing the rear brace into place to loosely hold it in position, as for the first time, I'll be soldering the model together. This had been suggested by several viewers, so I thought I'd give it a whirl now. As the rivets align the base and the body, I thought it would be best to glue the brace in position attached to the base to keep everything nicely aligned and in order. In 1991, Bins Ambulance und Umwelttechnik was founded in Ilmenau, to where ambulance production moved from Lourdes. The Ilmenau factory began producing specialised mobile hospitals and fire engines from 1996, 
while launch bins continued to make hearses and extended wheelbase vehicles. Bintz Ilmenau went into bankruptcy in 2012, leading to the sale and separation of Bintz Lorsch and Bintz Ilmenau. The Bintz brand was now marketed in blue and white in Ilmenau, while Lorsch could only market Bintz in grey lettering. Ilmenau operations currently continue to this day, while in 2018 Bintz Lorsch filed for bankruptcy before it was liquidated in January 2019. Meanwhile, I've been attempting to solder the bottom of the rear body with a thin layer to secure the broken pieces. It seems to be coming together fairly well to be honest. Next I use a bit of heat to manipulate the suspension spring level again. The Mercedes W110 was never manufactured as a production estate or station wagon. Instead, a Belgian company called Importateur des Moteurs et des Automobiles, IMA for short, imported and converted saloon models to estate configuration. This would explain why Bintz models are visually quite different to the conventional estate cars produced by IMA. Here I'm trying to buff up the beacon that should protrude through the roof of the ambulance. Even with this effort, it won't show a great deal when fitted to the body, as you see here. As with any problem, there is usually a solution. In this instance, a 3mm LED bulb that fits in the gap nicely. I will just need to cut its legs off and cut some of the lower portion away and stick it over the existing beacon remnants. Now I'll turn my attention to polishing the windscreen, first with Autosol Metal Polish and second with Astonish Wood Floor Polish. The early W110 models, known as the 190C and 190DC, came equipped with either the 1.9 straight 4 petrol engine or the 2 litre diesel engine. The 1965 second series had three engine options, featuring the uprated M121 inline 4 engine, now at a 2 litre displacement, now known as the 200 model. The 200D was the same OM621 unit as before, while the 230 had Mercedes M180 straight 6 fitted. Anyway, here's the model after its coat of primer, beginning to look a lot more complete again. On goes a coat of Tamiya TS7 Racing White, as specified by the community after I'd asked about the colour in a poll a short while back. It was a resounding victory for the off-white colour instead of a pure ice white. I painted the similar SNS ambulance in a pure white and wondered if I should do so again, but I listened to the good people of YouTube. Now I am applying Autosol to the base lightly covering the entire surface to regain some of the silver plated natural shine that had been lost. The grill in particular gets special attention. Then using my rotary tool, I buff up the surface to restore the natural shine and remove those decades old layers of grime. I love restoring the silver plated bases that came later in the regular wheels production run. The polishing process is so satisfying, yet not hugely time consuming. The results begin to appear with very little effort it seems. I will be replacing the Mercedes emblem with a creation of my own. I give the grille a good polishing now, but it will have some Molotow chrome applied to match the new badge later on. Another first for me will be using, too much, Millipa Epoxy Putty. This two part epoxy needs to be mixed so I can create a small circular figure to sit proudly atop the grill once more. There's plenty of kneading to be done to get the mix just right. After trying and failing several times, 
I start to get a rough size and thickness that won't look out of place replicating the three-pointed star. I'm carefully positioning and attempting to secure the mould to the grill without squashing or leaving fingerprints in the putty. After it has dried and set a bit, I colour the exposed chrome work with a Molotow paint pen. And now with the grill, bumpers and headlights revitalised, I colour in the epoxy badge. With that dry, I tap the wheels onto the axles and use the pen again to brighten up the axle ends. Next, I ready myself for the decal application. I wet the area slightly with a cotton bud that I reuse and dry out all of the time. I use some tweezers to fish out my red cross decal that I bought from Black Square Decals. I then adjust its positioning ever so slightly until I leave it to dry in its correct position. Then I use some Mr. Mark solution to seal in the decal. Again, I roll out the excess, similar to the water. I've got a new pen for fine black detailing here. The tiny nib works wonders on filling the gaps on the three-pointed star. So now to reassemble. I've preemptively put the window unit back in with the beacon attached, as it was a bit fiddly and kept coming off when I knocked it on camera. The plastic interior with the straightened suspension piece clips over the re-secured rear brace. Then I grab the base, slide on the headlights and grille, push down on the front end and over the two rear rivets. and then I can attach my screw to finish the build. Again, with this batch of restorations, I forgot to do my before turntable footage, but hopefully this will be the last time that happens. So this is how the Bins Ambulance looks now. It may not be perfect, but it's looking significantly better than before, and it's a great deal more solid now too. Gone is the patchy paintwork, replaced by Tamiya Racing White. It has the shiny new LED beacon, new decals, cleaned wheels, windows, and a fixed rear assembly. It also has that Mercedes hood ornament back in pride of place. This has been quite an unexpected undertaking, but the results speak for themselves. Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out my Patreon page for exclusive updates, and my Instagram for all the latest from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again for the next one. Bye for now.